Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is March 2nd of 2019, and it's about 9 a.m. in the morning. I want to, I'm, I'm not, I don't usually, I, I think, maybe, maybe you'll say I'm incorrect. I don't jump in on these. I'm, well, I was, one of the first, I was streaming videos and everything before there was a YouTube. Uh, and YouTube started in 2005. I was doing it years before that. I don't usually jump in, I don't think, on the controversies and things that pop up. There's a lot of, people call it drama, and I think a lot of you don't like it. And then there's a lot of you that follow it, and then there's, like I sort of follow the drama. I don't like it, but it talks about YouTube, the problems that YouTube is having, and things that are being done to correct things, all that type of stuff. So I do follow it, but I don't think I, I make a bunch of videos on the subject. But I do want to comment on, because I sort of, I think, commented a while back, I believe, in, uh, before this all came up, I think quite a few years ago, I think I commented about all the kids that had YouTube videos up, and they were, maybe I was jealous, uh, they were getting thousands, maybe millions of views, getting tons and tons of views. And uh, I commented back at the time that I, I think that I felt like their parents were exploiting them. And uh, also I was curious about why they were getting so many views and just what was going on. So and I, I made some comments in the past about that type of thing. Uh, now I want to put a please listen to this or please try to understand where I'm coming from. I'll put a little disclaimer in here or a little because what I'm going to talk about I don't want uh, people to come back. I don't want homosexuals or homosexual community or whatever to misinterpret what I'm saying. I am not linking because I'm going to give you some background information. I'm not linking homosexuality with uh, pedophiles. Uh, So, because I'm, I'm going to give you some information, a little history, I'm going to give you some information, but I don't want this to be misinterpreted. So if somehow it appears that I am saying that homosexuals are child perverts or something like that, I am not. If it does come across that way, I'm sorry, it, I'm inarticulate or I said something in the wrong way so do not take it that way now like I said back before uh, I uh, whoops let me bring my image up here okay why is okay I am not running the, where's the image again? Okay, going to be that way, right? Oh, I see, so that the image is running up in the corner and I just don't see it. Okay, except I can't enlarge it. I thought I turned it off. Uh, but I, if I turn it off here, I'll probably mess up. So anyway, a long time ago, I was doing uh, 
streaming video. I was online before. I've been online since 1982, 24 hours a day, seven days a week or whatever. Um, when it became possible to stream video, there were some, there were sites before, see, there was, what, I don't remember what order they were in, and I signed up for all of them. See you, see me, and I don't remember all the rest of them, where you could sign up. I was streaming video, by the way, before they were there. I was streaming it from my computer, period, without going through something you know, like that. But when these other services popped up, and I'm not sure if See You, See Me is the one I'm thinking about, but let's just take, if it was another one, I'm, I'm there would be like, uh, you'd log in, and there'd be rooms, they called them different things on different services, like rooms, uh, I forget all of them, I can't remember. But you'd go there, and there, there's, let's say there's 25 rooms. Uh, and they would uh, say uh, 20 to 25, there's no rules. You can stream adult material, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do that there. And the other, you know, 20 rooms are for discussions of politics, uh, discussions of uh, software, all this type of stuff. So, I, you know, I or just sit, make your own room there, and uh, you know. So I'd go there. Uh, on the first twenty rooms, there'd be nobody using them. I'd I'd go into one of the rooms and sit there, and occasionally somebody would pop in, you know, and it would show up on the chat thing. They'd pop in and. What are the initials? I don't remember. But somebody would pop in and they would type whatever it is, uh, sex, location, or, you know, S, uh, whatever. What they were popping in and what the message was, was what's your sex, uh, where you're located, whatever. And then you were supposed to type back or whatever, which I never did. You know, what in the fuck? Somebody did like, you know, how rude, you know? And bang, they were gone. And even if you had some people in there chatting, you know, with each other about something other than sex, which was rare for them to be talking about anything other than sex, somebody would do the same thing. They would just pop in and they would type that and then bang, they were gone. All the activity was in the sex things. And every system was that way. Uh... Now, let me say, before the World Wide Web and everything, and still, IRC chat rooms and what were the things called, the whatever, before there was a web browser, before, when you hopped in there, there were hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of chat rooms where you could, and uh, and in there, you, there were people in there a lot where you could jump in there and you could discuss some piece of software, a monitor, a TV, uh, whatever. Those were people were doing. There was no images, no video. I guess that's the difference. And uh, uh, so in those, there was communications and people talking. As soon as it went to where there was video, People were not. People were just interested in nudity or uh, something like that. Uh, anyway, I was uh, I was streaming, you know, a video in those uh, times when we had this, when it was all starting up or whatever. Uh, those services died. I remember one time, and I forget if that was see you, see me, or whatever, but I was, at some point, one of the services, wherever you were, there would be a little picture of your stream, would be a little tiny, would be on, you know, 
on the thing. So if somebody was there and they were in a room uh, or channel or whatever it was called and they were uh, they were there watching or whatever, they could see all the other little, you know, little icons or whatever that was actually the, the streaming video there. And there was one time because I, I started streaming video 24 hours a day seven, for a while, for several years. I just did that. Had the camera in my room going 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anyway, I was in one of the... Uh, I was sending video out and uh, nobody was nobody had come to my, my channel. Nobody came to my channel. Uh, and my son and the next door neighbor... And I think my son was probably, I don't know, 16, 17, something like that. Next door neighbor was about the same. They came into my room and uh, walked through my room, through the camera's view. Bang! That they could hit a thing and people could hit a thing to bang, 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 my, the, the thing just started, people were, you know, uh, pinging me, coming there, and they were pinging me, or whatever, and at that point with the streaming, it must have been that some of the resources were, even though they this was a service before YouTube, some of the, not like it used to be where everything was coming off my computer, and if I had like nine people watching, uh, the video or whatever, the computer would slow down so much I couldn't even do in, anything with it. But when they had these services, you were still using a little bit of your uh, internet or whatever. But, you know, my computer was locking, it was locking up. I couldn't do anything because everybody was binging, you know, hitting, hey. And then a few messages got through from them like, uh, who are those boys? Uh, how old are they? Stuff like that. My, I had to turn off the computer, you know, and reboot to even get connected, you know, to get connected or whatever. That was sort of a wake up to me. Hey, uh. so um, also now let me say. That's where I want to get in. I want to make sure I don't get. People take advantage of certain people take advantage of things that are great, no matter what it is. Uh, I uh, I worked hospital security at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, which was located downtown Kansas City, Missouri area, right next to, well, right next to the Liberty Memorial, which is a, was a monument after World War II that was erected for, you know, because of World War I, and was erected in that tall, a gigantic tower went up. They had a World War I, uh, like museum there, not a great one, but they, but, then there was a, a park, Penn Valley Park around there, or whatever. Uh, because of, I guess, the a gigantic tower, um, that entire area, well, right next to it was St. Mary's Hospital, then right next to St. Mary's Hospital was Trinity Lutheran Hospital. And there was some distance between, there wasn't much distance, distance between St. Mary's and the Liberty Memorial Mall, or Liberty Memorial and the park there. Trinity, we were a few blocks away from it. Uh, the homosexuals in the Kansas City, Missouri area decided to adopt this gigantic pillar, are you getting my drift, you know, going up as their area to meet and uh, hook up 
or whatever. And it was at night all the time, the traffic in that area, you know, the rest of the city pretty much, you know, it's night and the area, the city is kind of shut down. There's always some traffic on, you know, like midnight or whatever, but not that area. Cars going through, cars stopping, cars blinking, they're doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, people wanting to hook up and getting, you know, I, one on just one occasion, uh, I'm outside patrolling the area of the hospital, Trinity Lutheran Hospital, and there's a car in a parking lot where there's only, it, it's midnight, so we don't have a lot of employees and patients don't park there or whatever, and there's very few cars there. And I didn't even tend actually to drive through the gate to uh, drive into the parking lot. But then I look and see that car and I'm like, okay, so I pull in and it's uh, a couple guys, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning and I check them and I say, you know, don't park in our parking lot. Go park someplace else. And they were glad that they, you know, that I, you know, they were okay, yes, sir, yes, officer, you know, and then they they left. So, uh, my point being that people look for opportunities, and uh, when I was in. Uh, By the way, like I said, I worked at Trinity Lutheran Hospital. Uh, when I was uh, I was second shift supervisor. Well, I started a day shift, and I went to second shift, and and uh, then as supervisor, I went back to day shift, and I was supervisor eventually, and again, and uh, on the day shift, I was in charge of you know, security officers and uh, seven parking lot attendants. Uh, several of, of them were, uh, I think I've gotten sidetracked here, but anyway, that's another reason for that disclaimer. Uh, several of them were gay and uh, they didn't, of course, make it Public. This was back in 1970s or something. You know, they didn't really publicize it, but they trusted me enough and knew that I was, I guess, liberal enough that they had no problem with me. You know, me being aware of that. Uh, they never. They were excellent employees, by the way. Our director of security, who I've talked about in the past, being so racist. I can remember a departmental meeting. I think I've got on a wider branch in this, so there again. Uh, I can remember we had a departmental meeting. And uh, so all, well, the parking lot attendants were, it was security officer meeting. So we had 15 security officers. Well, director of security says, uh, I just found out there's a bunch of homosexuals. I'm not sure if you said homosexuals or gays. I can't remember. That was the 70s, what would a person have said in this hospital, you know, working in this hospital, and I'm going to clear them out of here. And uh, so I'm sitting there, okay, if I, you know, if I say what I need to say, then, you know, but I did the right thing. And I said, Mr. Ross, uh, you know, you can't fire people for being homo, you know, homosexual and blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he just dismissed me, you know, just dismissed me. Uh, he went to, by the way, like that area, that area of Kansas City had a lot of gay bars and it was kind of, you know, like certain, every city I think has certain areas that are, you know, this is uh, uh, an Italian area, or this is this, maybe maybe not as much nowadays, I don't know, but that was an area where there was, there was a big church, there still is, I think, a big church there that is very open to any group, and uh, uh, gays 
would, you know, have church services there and have meetings there, all types of stuff. So anyway, the director of security, he went to administration, as he was doing all the time, uh, about everything. When he was there, he was running down to administration every day, and he was telling them everything. And when he would be off sick, which was often, or in the hospital, or taking a trip, and he would pay to go overseas even to secure, using his own money, the hospital wouldn't pay for that, uh, to security conferences and all that type of stuff. Uh, I would usually, almost always, be uh, take his place, and he'd have me take his place, as so I'd be the acting director of security, whatever. So he'd be gone for like a couple of weeks or whatever. Uh, he'd been he was retired military. He had, uh, and then he was he was with disability, but not from combat or whatever. He was in a car with other military men and a. And toxic, a drunk driver crashed into that car. I believe he said that all the other officers or whatever that were in that car were killed and he was just really badly disabled and his leg, you know, he had a bad leg that sometimes he ended up being in the hospital there with his leg. So anyway, whenever he was, he'd put me, but anyway, so I'd be the acting director. Well, like I said, when he was there, he would run down to administration all the time. He would call them all the time. When he was gone, off sick or whatever the thing was, I would never go, I never went to administration and whatever. So I'd be, I'd be making my rounds to the hospital and I'd see the assistant administrator who we did, report, who was our boss. You know, there was the administrator, then there was a couple of assistant administrators and this assistant administrator was our boss or whatever. Anyway, I'd maybe pass him in the hall and he'd say, uh, Jim, it sure is quiet. Everything okay? And I'd say, yeah, everything's fine, sir. And he'd say, sure is quiet with Mr. Ross gone. And then, you know, kind of smile or whatever. But um, anyway, Mr. Ross went after this meeting where he told us he was going to clear Trinity Lutheran Hospital of uh, gays he went to administration, went in and told the administration that what he was going to do, and they said, no, you are not. You drop this idea, you drop it right now, and if you pull any kind of this crap, you're going out the door, you'll be fired immediately. Do you understand? And I think it was like, you know, yes, no, you, you know, repeat back to me, you know, say, you know, uh, Mr. Huber, I understand, you know, that was, it was, so when Mr. Ross left there and I'm, I'm making my rounds, I go by his office and he said, Jim, and I come in, he said, uh, no, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not going to uh, do anything about all the gays that are, you know, working here or whatever, uh, that's, oh, and I said, oh, okay, uh, I should have, I should have said, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll drop the. I'll, I'll do away with the list, or you know, I should have should have said something to scare him. You know, scare him. To, it wouldn't have worked. So, so uh, uh, I'm not. I'll come back sometime and tell one of the people that I supervised. Well, I guess I'm sort of telling it now. One of the people that I supervised, he was a parking lot attendant. He was actually a Lutheran minister in the Chicago area, and I'm I'm not from North Shore. And he had a church that was, uh, you know, people with money, with the expensive, you know, that was his, and uh, he had to. Uh, not because he, they didn't know that he was gay, but him and his wife were separated, and they wouldn't allow the Lutheran Church would not allow that. 
And so he came to Kansas City from Chicago and was working as a parking lot attendant. Once a year, the bishop from uh, there would come to Kansas City, maybe not just, maybe he was making other, maybe he had to make rounds. Uh, but I'm not sure if he came just for that reason. Uh, anyway, this guy was, uh, you know, a really nice guy, but he was very ashamed of his, of being gay, and he wanted absolutely nobody to, you know, know about it or anything like that. But anyway, the bishop would come, and the bishop, I guess, well, he would, he told me, the bishop would come and say, you know, you, you know, you can be divorced, and you can go back to your parish, you know, and be in charge of your church and your congregation and your everything and it was a nice church a nice congregation I guess uh, but you can't you know you can't be separate you know you can divorce the wife it's okay you come back but you can't come back while you know you're just separated or you know whatever and uh, eventually uh, I got fired from Trinity Uh, for fighting racial prejudice and not long after that one of my regrets I have a lot of regrets one of my regrets is this parking lot attendant that I was a supervisor of and uh, friend um, he called me and he said, uh, Jim, out, out your way, I'm going to be, and that he hadn't been doing, you know, hadn't been allowed to do, I'm not sure if he wasn't allow, allowed to do it or whatever, but he said, um, I forget which Baptist church it was. I mean, I'm not a Baptist. He said, I'll be preaching at the, uh, whichever Grandview Baptist church or whatever it was, was a big church or the Blue Ridge Baptist Church or something like that on Sunday and everything. And uh, I was married with children and let's not go into that, you know. I felt like, you know, I should have said, you know, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll show up, you know, because he called me and told me. And uh, I didn't, you know, because I was married with children. And uh, shortly after that, his family, for some reason, who did not know that he was gay, just decided to come from wherever they were, I'm guessing Chicago, and uh, drop in on him unannounced as a surprise, I guess. He was living uh, a couple blocks over from Trinity Lutheran Hospital, and that was a, that was a bad area if you were renting an apartment in that area. I mean, the, the area, actually, we were pretty lucky with the hospital. There was, it was close to downtown. There were businesses around, kind of. The hospital that I worked at before, St. Joe Hospital, was, the hospital was there, and then all around was, that was like the worst. Well, we had out of 10 security officers while I was there. We had two of them shot, one killed in the line of duty. That was a bad neighborhood, and the problem was right there in your face. Over here, there was businesses that sort of helped out. But the housing around there, and, were, and he didn't have a car. And he lived a couple blocks away in an apartment. I never saw the apartment. I don't think I even drove down that street. I mean, when I drove the patrol car, there was times I had to go someplace. I don't think I, but I know the apartments, well, he said the apartment was bad. I'm thinking, you know, cockroaches and everything. So his family 
dropped on dropped in on him unannounced. Then they, you know, left town. And uh He never missed work, but he didn't show up like the next day or whatever. Well, he didn't show up the next day. So they called to check to see if, you know, what was wrong. Security did, you know. Uh, no answer. And, you know, they called again, whatever. And I'm not sure exactly, because I, I didn't get all the details. I'm not sure. They probably sent a security officer over. Maybe they just called the police to check on welfare or something. I'm not sure. I would guess they would have sent us, you know, like two blocks away or whatever. Uh, he had committed suicide. He hung himself. Okay, back to the subject. Um... The point I was trying to make, by the way, was that people take advantage of opportunities, and especially having to do with sex. Maybe I'm being tunnel vision. May maybe it applies to everything. Maybe alcoholics take advantage of a situation. Or I don't think so. I mean, I was both my parents were alcoholics. I don't know. Back to my thesis here. When, uh, anyway, I saw how good things, people jumped on it to, for their little thing they were interested in, which, if you're interested in spreadsheets or uh, uh, some program or whatever, Okay, you're not, your glands are not driving you crazy. You're not, you know, yeah, we'd have a few people talking about Windows or uh, talking about Word, you know, the Word uh, program or something. Office, you know, software. But, so when I was living in Orlando, Florida, there was, where we lived, there was a state park, real nice state park. Well, at first I didn't know, you know, first, wasn't very far to drive. You know, I drove around and entered into the park and parked in their regular, you know, parking area and looked at the, and they have the gigantic birds walking around. If you're trying to have a picnic, the birds are bigger than, you know, you and they come over to get fed, all types of stuff. So that was, you know, that was great great park and everything and it wasn't very far to drive around then I think I looked on I'm not sure if it was Google Maps or what it was did Google Maps exist I think it would yeah but then I looked and there was a back entrance into the park I didn't have to drive I could have walked on uh, my lazy I wasn't as fat then I don't think but anyway I it was just a short drive just go down this road, make a left right over there, and there was, it wasn't like the other thing you go into, there was uh, no, uh, uh, security, you know, I mean, it wasn't, there, you know, it just, you go and there's a little gravel parking area and there'd be maybe two, three, four cars there and I'd park. And then you'd start on a trail. That, that's the, what I went over there for. I was walking the, some trails and got lost a couple of times. Got lost one time walking the trail and it got dark. You know, I got lost because there was no, you know, and uh, it got dark. I could hear, I guess, deer in the thing, brushing anything. I luckily find my, found my way out. Uh, that, that was before. No, there was... Cell phones existed then, yeah. But uh, anyway, there was two or three or four cars there every time I went over, and then I'd walk this trail. Then I'd walk the trail back, so getting some exercise. 
And uh, sometimes there'd be a guy, you know, standing there like at the at the entrance area or whatever. So, so anyway, this uh, I thought just waiting for somebody or something. So this one time I was leaving and I came down to that and there was uh, nobody standing in that area. And there might have been a car or two there, I'm not sure. But I came down and I thought, well, over here where there's a guy usually standing or whatever, there appears to be a path there. It's still daylight or whatever. I'm going to go check that path over there. And uh, maybe that goes around a different, you know, a different little route. Give me an another new area to walk to. And I go over and go up this little path and step in. But it's an area. It's just... You step into an area where the, there are trees around, but it, it's not a path. It's just like a, a cove or a, a, what do you call it, a landing. I mean, it was just an area. You go in, and it was littered with condoms. And then I backed on out of there, and then I knew why guys were standing there. Taking advantage of every situation, I thought... Uh, I thought what's going to happen is the park is going, they'll close, you know, they'll just close down that entrance. That's what I'd do if I was a park, is I would just, you know, put a gate up and uh, close down that entrance and make everybody, you know, go in, come in the main entrance where there was security and check in, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, just running, you know, the everything uh, and when I was talking I thought about another incident and it's out of my mind and it's probably good because I shouldn't be going through all of this okay so as you oh and that did I tell you and I show me back up maybe I did I know I talked about it like the other day or and, and then even uh, several years ago or whatever about uh, I don't think I did on this video and that's where I was heading back uh, quite a few years ago I saw that there was um, yeah I think I did mention it I'll do mention it again that there were these girls who were getting thousands if not millions of views doing somersaults and swimming and whatever 12 year old you know girls do or something or other and I thought my god man they're getting tons of views and then I, then I was curious and how many views are they getting how much money are they making how are they uh, how are they doing it and I thought, well, it must be mom and dad making a video, and the kids, and the mom and dad are doing it for, you know, the money, and they're probably making pretty good money. And uh, so I was looking around, and then I noticed some comments, and this is several years ago. Uh, oh, my God. Some of the comments were, you know, pretty bad. I mean, pedophile type comments or whatever I mean not extreme I'm not sure what you, how you you know uh, and I thought oh these parents should not be doing this at all now when this controversy here popped up about kids videos and comments and that type of stuff recently and I won't I'll put some links to these discussions here below that you're going to see. Uh, now, when this popped up like last week or whatever it was, I then went and did a search to see if some of those sites still existed from there, and they did. But then there was uh, a girl who was 19 who used to be so it was quite a few years ago. Who used to be apparently I don't remember, but she commented that she used to be, and that she auditioned 
for a company and that these other girls, so I thought like when they had these six girls or whatever out at the swimming pool and whatever, I thought they were like some parents, you know, that was a parent's yard and uh, some neighbor girls came over and were getting into this thing. Maybe they were dividing up the income from, but apparently a company and apparently they had more than one. Seems to me that would be the thing to do is not allow those companies to exist. If mom and dad want to do it, okay, you know, maybe we'll have some rules or I don't know how you handle it. Yeah, actually what I'm saying is you can't handle this. Uh, but I didn't realize that I thought that was, I thought it was kind of strange that, but, and in fact, from that, well, from what that girl said, um, she said that she auditioned, and it sounded like too when she was talking that, for some of these things, it was like she was to make a video every, was it every week or every day or something, and give that to them, but the the videos were so good, I think that they must have had a crew come out and do it. I don't know. But, so anyway, the advertisers, as you, I think you probably already know about this, advertisers, this made the CN, this made CNN news. You know, pedophiles are uh, posting comments and uh, watching videos of, innocent videos in a way, well, innocent, don't think it's a good idea to have your little girl out doing somersaults and stuff and zooming in and whatever. I just don't think it's because of child safety or whatever, but it's perfectly, you know. Uh, but so uh, anyway, what what they were doing was well, they're doing I guess more a lot more because from somebody a video. I, Getting ready for this, I watched a little bit of another video, and it never occurred to me. Okay, I watched uh, Eli the Computer Guy. Well, I'll be going to, uh, and it never occurred to me. But I have, I've taken some of my videos in the past and embedded the code on my blog. Nobody goes to my blog anymore, so I don't do it. But there would have, there'd be the video there. And then, of course, uh, there would be comments there. Of course, nobody came there. In the old days, I had, before Facebook and stuff, you know, I, my, I, my blog was started in 1982. I had hundreds come a day, sometimes thousands come a day to my, uh, my blog. Now nobody comes. <laughs> but, you know, what Eli here mentioned is you can take your coat, so what YouTube is uh, doing is disabling comments on child sites and so I, they're like saying eventually you could you know get them back provided you moderate your your comments and of course uh, Eli the computer guy let me see where he is where are you there he is. What he com he's commented in the past, having nothing to do with this also, about how it is impossible with the tools that YouTube gives you that you can moderate your your comments or your you know your chat room if you're doing live or whatever, because you delete somebody and you ban somebody, and they're back in twenty seconds. Uh, or less, you know, they come in with a different IP address or whatever, you know, whatever they do. They can, those people can just pop back if you have no control. Anyway, so YouTube just put these new rules into effect. Uh, so what I was uh, curious about, I'll put a link, I haven't even listened to it to this guys, but I'll, it looks like I'll put a link. I'll put a link to this and 
Um, okay, I was looking for. Okay, I haven't. A Big Bang Theory was. I was fans of that. For some reason, I haven't. I don't know why. I watched a whole bunch. Of, you know, every week their episodes or whatever. And then I just kind of stopped watching. Don't know why. I think it's an excellent, excellent show. Now, when they started Young Shelton show, oh, I think that's just, that is just great. And I try to keep up with it each, you know, each week. And uh, Young Shelton, who is 10 years old, uh, I think he's 10. Let's see. Okay. If it doesn't give his age, I guess I got to click on him. I think I already did that. Anyway, they have it. They did a spinoff, and it's really great. And uh, yes, he's ten years old, born July fifteenth of twenty eight, and uh, born in Georgia. Uh, what I found out a few weeks ago, I was really surprised. Is he has a YouTube site? Now, I found that out longer than, uh, no, I, I forget it. short time ago, I found out that he has a YouTube site. And keep in mind, he is, uh, oh, this is just doing a search on his name. In the show, this is, spoken. this is his twin, well, not her. Uh, the little girl there is his twin sister, and I, I mean, you know, for the TV show. But he... He's only 10 years old, and he is really, he, you know, he's a, I've seen him a few times on different shows. He's really articulate. He's really smart. And uh, what I did not know till recent, well, then I found out he had a YouTube site. And I thought it was just since he, and his, his site is Iron Loves Theater. That's his thing. And he does like little reviews of uh, of that. And I'm not sure how long he's been. Let's see. Nine months, nine months, nine months, nine months, ten months. Anyway, he's making reviews and he's really oh, good. Man, I tell you, when God was handing out brains, he didn't give me any. He gave this kid a whole bunch of brains. Anyway, uh, he only has 11,000 subscribers. That's surprising. Uh, but what I found is that I did a search or whatever for, the, for this, and... He's been making, I don't know how old he, he's been making YouTube videos, I don't know, f f five years old or whatever. He's been making YouTube videos along the same lines when he's, you know, real little. Anyway, I, when I heard about the new rules of, uh, and when YouTube said that they were uh, dislabeling comments, that's, Look here, comments are disabled for this video. I don't know if there were, if there was any. Uh, look at this. This is really neat. He has 1,337 views. He has 152 thumbs up. He has zero thumbs down. So that's. Uh, but so. I will put a link to this so you can, I'll put a link to this. I don't think I need to put a link to this. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to put a link to that or not. I'm not sure I need to put a link to that. So this is on YouTube. Let's check and see if. This is five months ago, so are there comments here? The Big Bang Theory prequel, Young Shelton. 
Okay, there are comments here. So this is CBS News. So I guess it would have to be someplace that's just okay. Let's let's pick one here that's uh, three months old. Let's pick one that's three months old, and see if they've gone back and turned off. Hi, this is Ian, and today I saw Billy Elliot the Musical at Signature Theater. I've not been able to see as many. Uh... Yep, disabled. So YouTube is. Um, Just labeling all the comments on children's videos. Now I can definitely see why they would need to do it for all those um, videos. Let's see. That company must have been named Seven Girls or something. Because I remember back however years ago, I think, when I was when I stumbled on Okay, Seven Girls. And then there was others copying that. Well, that one I knew too, and I thought, okay. But I guess the, the copying was probably the company had seven girls something, and seven girls something else, and something like, when you did a search for whatever. So let's see. Let's see if they have seven gymnastic girls. Surely they have disabled the comments on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah comments are disabled there now this they definitely need they definitely need to disable the comments on this and I don't know how um, I don't see any way that you be able to ever have because X number of people are going to make comments. Well, what they need to do, which none of us, which I'm the only one in the world that wants it. And I mentioned this many times and years ago I mentioned it. Years ago and I forget how long ago it was somebody that made chips for computers or whatever and it was one of the biggies and the sort of the biggie uh, came out and said I'm sure I think they might have even made a few chips and there was a num a number in that chip that would identify that chip and then they would know and the internet if it or maybe I'm not sure well the internet I think existed I'm not sure if the World Wide Web, I think it, it uh, you all went fucking crazy. No, 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 no. And I was great. Let everybody be identifiable. That would solve so many problems. And uh, of course, none of you agree with me. I, that's the only way that you're going to solve a problem like this is if when somebody sits down it that doesn't mean if they did do that well like YouTube apparently has a YouTube kids channel make everybody have to sign in and prove who they are for that chat for that channel And, but that doesn't mean that when you like log in to like even YouTube when you're if you're you know your kids use your computer and then you go over to some other channel that doesn't mean that YouTube has to show who you are or whatever just have it set up so everybody has to prove who they are to go to like the YouTube kids channel and now I haven't heard anything about actually if the YouTube's kids, but then another little mini disaster has happened, and this is unbelievable. It was it made you know not as big a deal yet. I don't think made the CNN web page. Um, 
some lady claimed she was watching with her kid and anim an animated thing on the YouTube kids channel and during the video a man not an animated man a real man pops into the video and uh, says tells I'm not going to go into detail t I guess it was a short clip, little thing but you know hey kids here's here's the correct way to commit suicide and then shows or says something and then uh, it goes back to the thing my god uh but YouTube has problems so I think this video has been long enough I'm uh I'm not sure if I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish or if I explained it in the correct way. I was trying to say that there's people who take advantage of all the great things we have. Email. How many how many emails do you get telling you, you know, from, oh, this is uh, People's Bank and uh, there's a problem with your account. You need to log in, click, use this link and log in here and enter your username and your password and your date of birth and your social security number so we can fix your account. Or how many of you get, you know, emails, uh, this is the wife of Prince so-and-so and he was financial manager of uh, the King's account here and uh, he has hidden away uh, two tons of gold and if you will just uh, help me out by sending me you know five thousand dollars I'll send all the gold you know and just it's not just email it's everything back when one of the Olympics uh, oh, a long time ago one of the Olympics things was going that's when I had my bulletin board system so that might have been before 1995 in the World Wide Web I'm not sure probably was uh, I had a computer bullet board and I had a chat thing on it, of course. I'd have people jump in to chat. And uh, anyway, I had this girl that jumped in to chat. And uh, she'd occasionally chat, jump in to chat. Had quite a few people that jump in to chat. And uh, she would jump in to chat. And I'd say, well, you know, she'd bing me or whatever, you know. And I'd say, oh, I... How's it going? Oh, everything. I just got home from school and everything. Oh, okay, you know. Okay, well, have a good, you know. And then before long, she was talking a little bit more to me, and then she said, uh, then the Olympics were coming up, and she said, oh, she would be saying when, that she had to, that she took gymnastics or whatever, and or something, gymnastics, or what's the other thing, anyway. And... Uh, so then she said it's some of Spain when the Olympics were in Spain. And she said, Well, uh, I won't be able to come to your uh oh no. Then she said, Well, I'm I'm going to uh I'm in the Olympics and I said, You're what? Yeah, I'm in the Olympics, I'm in gymnastics or whatever and I won't be able to call but I'm gonna I'll I'll uh Yeah. She said, I'll be in the Olymp, you know, and I thought, wow, okay. And I thought, okay, why would you lie about that? Maybe that makes me dumb. I mean, why? I don't lie about stuff. And so I, and I didn't understand why. I mean, I wasn't going to, you know, to, I said, you know, fine, you're in the Olympics, you know, and right, you've been taking whatever. So then I thought, and then I think I told somebody, my family or something, I said, you know, one of the, there's a girl who calls into the BBS from time to time, and she's actually going to be in the Olympics or whatever. And so then when the Olympics started up or whatever, uh, the girl logs into my, my BBS and says, oh, I can't spend very much time. I'm here. And I knew then that was a lie. You're not, you know, she didn't go to the Olympic and then... Uh, take the time to log into Howard's notebook. So, and it's that type of stuff 
they take advantage uh, people take advantage of every of everything when I had that computer bulletin board system which I started in 1982 and it went to 1995 and I was like one of the first bulletin board systems people called in or whatever I had a lot of stuff happen but uh I didn't, some people had problems. Uh, I didn't have any problems. Everybody liked my bulletin board system. I had almost no problems at all. Other people did. And I didn't have any problems because my board was open to everybody, whether you were using a TRS-80 computer or a Commodore 64 or an i. Apple computer, whatever the fuck they are, or uh, and it, you know, I was open and I didn't block anybody. I didn't censor anybody, and everything was fine. But when the World Wide Web came along, uh, I'm not wishing for the old days. Three hundred baud. You know, twelve, and I spent so much money for these. You know, over the years, until the you know three hundred baud modem. Then I had to get a twelve hundred baud, then a twenty four hundred baud, then a sixty four k, and then you know, same with printers, computers, monitors. One of the first printers I had printed on cost hundreds of dollars. Printed on thermal paper that was this wide. Oh, so I'm happy with my 400 meg down internet and 20 uh, meg up internet and everything but the craziness I'm not you know and I've got on my email I've got the blockers you know blocker set uh that's, you know, that's sort of under control. I don't see any of those things anymore from, you know, send me money, we have gold over here for you, or, or I don't get those kind of things. I am getting, <laughs> I made a mistake and donated some money to Bernie Sanders or somebody else, uh, and, and I tried to unsubscribe, but I guess they passed around to the Democratic Party as I get messages every day and doesn't do any good. I turn off, like, get a thing from Bernie Sanders, to, and I click, you know, okay, don't send anymore. But then I get one from some Democrat in Texas or somebody else I never, some Democrat I never heard from. They must have passed the list around. I could do the same thing. I could set up the rule. I'm sure I could eliminate those. But anyway, I haven't had breakfast, and it's, I did take my morning medication. But I haven't had breakfast yet, and I have some chores that I need to do. I very rarely take my blood sugar, but I tried to stick myself, and for some reason this morning I just didn't want to. I can't even see how much you can. You know, I'm gonna have to change this thing so that I can resize the uh, video or whatever. But I went to stick myself, and I guess I didn't push quite hard enough, and it broke the skin, and I felt the pain, but no blood came out. And I'm not going to stick myself again. I mean, not today. I'll stick myself once, and that's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop this, and I'll put the links in case you want to see this information, and I'm going to sit, I'm going to, get myself something to eat, and then I'll watch, uh, and, uh, watch the, uh, comments. I watch Eli, the computer guy. He's sort of like me. He goes on for, sometimes for a long time. He make, he's making a whole bunch of short videos, but he makes some videos that are an hour or two long, uh, like I do. But anyway, this is only 12 minutes, so I, and I know what he's going to say. Kind of pretty predictable. But he really, uh, 
got a lot of, of background, and uh, I don't agree with him politically at all. But in fact, I un uh, unsubscribed to him back uh, just before election time, just before voting, or maybe right after voting. And uh, I do like young Shelton. The uh, no wait, I, I like the show Young Shelton. I think it's really, really good. The the acting, the uh, chemistry between the actors and the the topics and everything, and especially if you've watched, you know, The Big Bang Theory and stuff. So I'll put links to some of his stuff below. I'll put some links to to where you can click on on Amazon. And if you go there and purchase something, I will get a commission. And that will help me to buy new stuff. And if I buy new stuff, I'll tell you if it's any good. Thank you very much for watching.